the year 877, a vast host of Scandinavian raiders under the sea king Guthrum treacherously broke their truce with Alfred of Wessex and thundered across his kingdom on horseback to capture the town of Exeter, an important regional power base in the far west of the kingdom. Wessex was the last Anglo-Saxon kingdom to stand firm against the great heathen army that had swept England in a blitzkrieg since the 860s, yet it now stood alone against the oncoming storm from across the sea, and increasingly from within Britain itself. Guthrum's decision to cross Wessex in its entirety on horseback to capture Exeter in the far west, rather than any of the other royal centres, remains a perplexing one when taken at face value. Yet despite what the Christian writers of the time had to say about the unorganised heathen horde from beyond the sea, Scandinavians, in fact, tended to be shrewd tacticians. They only struck when they felt that they had the advantage, and if possible, when their enemies were at as much of a disadvantage as possible. Sure, they wanted to raid, and to make war, but only when they felt assured of victory, or when they absolutely had to fight. Guthrum, the new de facto leader of the army, was thus the shrewdest and cleverest of the lot. His decision to take Exeter, therefore, must have been a premeditated one. Had he planned to link up with the Britons of Dumnonia in order to face the West Saxons? For centuries, the Britons of Cornwall had been engaged in a state of almost perpetual warfare with Wessex, and Scandinavians are known to have allied with them on occasion during the reigns of Alfred's predecessors from the 830s onwards. Exeter, situated near the old border between the West Saxons and the Britons, was a town already well known to Scandinavians. It also provided options for Guthrum should he need to retreat. There was also another reason why Guthrum took his men to Exeter. In fact, his assault may have actually been intended as a distraction from this other reason. Whilst the sons of Lothbrok, Ivar and Halfdan, had apparently ceded command of the Great Heathen Army to Guthrum in the late 870s, apparently preferring to involve themselves in the affairs of Northumbria and Ireland. Their other supposed brother, Uber, apparently reappeared in 877, off the coast of Devon at the head of a vast fleet of 120 ships. Almost certainly, Guthrum's plan had been to link up with Uber in a masterful pincer movement to trap Alfred before ravaging Wessex for the final, definitive time. Unlike the other Sons of Lothbrok, which in itself is a rather ambiguous term only credited to the leaders of the Great Heathen Army several centuries later. Uber is described in at least one source as being the Ducks, or King of the Frisians. Scandinavians had long been active in Frisia on the northern coast of the modern-day Netherlands, probably since the 8th century or earlier. It was during that era of the late 8th century, many generations before Uber's time, that the Frankish Emperor Charlemagne fought a three decades long religious crusade against the mainland Old Saxons. These wars opened up the coasts of Northern Europe to the wider world for the first time, but in turn they also led to Danish incursions into the Frisian and Frankish coastlines to their south over the coming decades. Especially after Charlemagne's death led to a gradual breakup of much of his empire, Frisia itself shared a similar cultural and linguistic past with the inhabitants of Scandinavia. Both were societies traditionally rooted in the ancient Germanic past. Like the inhabitants of Old Saxony, Frisians had long held on to this culture whilst their cousins, the Franks, headed south to carve up the province of Gaul after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. After converting to Christianity, and to a certain extent beginning to see themselves as the inheritors of at least a part of Rome's imperial legacy, the Franks then took it upon themselves to campaign northwards against their cousins, forcibly converting them to Christianity if needs be. Frisia was the first on the Frankish agenda, being gradually invaded during the 7th and 8th centuries, and subsequently brought under relative imperial control a century or so before Old Saxony, when the empire began to fracture into various regional states after the death of Charlemagne, Frisia again became a wild frontier a melting pot of different cultures and ideas, with very little centralised control to speak of. In fact, it was just the sort of instability that Scandinavians had already capitalised upon, on coastlines from the Black Sea to the Scottish Isles. At first they raided, but before long, settlements began to be founded on the marshy islands and inlets of the coast. Eventually, Frisia became a safe haven and breeding ground for pirates and Vikings for a century or more to come. In 841, the Frankish king Lothar I 
is recorded as having granted the large island of Volcheren on the Frisian coast to a certain Danish king named Harald. This was probably intended to be a similar defensive arrangement, as was later concluded rather more successfully with Rollo, the founder of Normandy. If the Frankish king had hoped this grant of land might protect his borders from similar raiders, however, he seems to have been woefully wrong. In 851, one of the Frankish chronicles records that Danish Vikings devastated Frisia. They appear to have remained there too. Whilst the Anglo-Saxon chronicle calls the Viking army Mikkelherr, Great Army, the Latin Historia de Sancto Cuthberto instead uses the term Scaldingi, possibly meaning people from the river Scheldt, the same river that the Isle of Walcheren lies at the mouth of. In 855, a force of Danes and Frisians are recorded to have made landfall on the Isle of Sheppey off the coast of Kent, long a staging post and winter camp for opportunistic sea raiders. Uber, who is usually associated with Ivar the Boneless in contemporary sources, is also sometimes called King of the Frisians, so there remains the possibility that he had some kind of association with the settlers at Valkara. If indeed Uber's troops were drawn from the Frisian settlement started by Harald over two decades earlier, many of his warriors, possibly even the king himself, would have been born in Frisia. The considerable time that members of the Great Army appear to have spent in Ireland and the continent suggests that these men were well accustomed to Christian society, which in turn may partly explain their achievements in England. A similar situation as to that in Frisia had also become the case in various other lands as far afield as the Scottish Isles, Ireland, Eastern Europe, and even to a certain extent, the northern shores of Francia. By the time of the Great Heathen Army in 865, exploratory raids had already been conducted into the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms on a number of occasions, yet they were usually fought off by local armies, with a few pitched battles being recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle prior to the coming of the Great Heathen Army in the 860s. Yet rather than give up, something extraordinary seems to have happened amongst the various warlords of Europe. In the 860s, after over 70 years of raiding, Warriors from all over the Viking world came together under a vast coalition to take on the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms once and for all. Britain was a land long known to Vikings from the experiences of at least three successive generations. The possibility even remains that Ivar, a leader often associated with the Norse settlements in Ireland even prior to the coming of the Great Heathen Army, may have actually been born there. Similarly, the possibility remains that Uber had been born in Frisia a descendant of those first settlers a generation earlier. A multi-ethnic force, the Great Heathen Army probably included Vikings already active in Britain and Ireland, as well as men directly from Scandinavia and the continent. Whilst Ivar is often regarded as the overall commander of the expedition, Uber is often placed as the commander who remained with the fleet. After making landfall in East Anglia in 865, Ivar and Halfdan rode north overland to ravage York, living off the land as they went. Uber, meanwhile, assuming the role of a pirate admiral, is thought to have trailed along the coast with the fleet to meet up with his brothers at York. Whilst there, he probably participated in the subjugation of Northumbria. Later, in 869, he is associated with the martyrdom of King Edmund after the conquest of East Anglia. After this point, however, Uber drops off the radar for close to a decade. In the meantime, Ivar, it seems, went back to Ireland where he may have seamlessly dropped back into the Irish Chronicles to reappear as Imar, the founder of the Uí Imer dynasty, an immensely powerful Norse-scale mafia-esque clan that would go on to fight a centuries-long struggle against the descendants of Alfred for supremacy of Britain. Halfdan, meanwhile, seems to have remained in Northumbria where he became king and was later killed, possibly whilst campaigning against the Picts to the north. It is then in 877, seemingly out of nowhere, that Uber suddenly reappears off the coast of Wessex, now at the head of a vast fleet of 120 ships, possibly fresh out of the Scandinavian settlements in Ireland. Had that fleet successfully made landfall in Wessex that year, then the history of England may well have been very different. But this time, unlike at York, it wasn't to be the case. In one of the most fortuitous moments of chance ever to befall England, a storm is said to have destroyed almost the entire fleet forcing Guthrum to abandon his plan 
and flee back across Wessex to his heartlands in East Anglia and Eastern Mercia to gather reinforcements and come up with a new plan. Uber survived the storm and may have taken refuge at a base off the coast of Wales, where he licked his wounds ready for the next engagement. However much Alfred may have seen the storm as a final divine retribution against the heathens, his kingdom was still beset on all sides by armies of piratical raiders intent on killing him and usurping his realm. Guthrum returned of course, this time with a new plan, even more daring than the last. Rather than wait for allies or to try and trick Alfred again, he simply rode headlong across the plains of Wessex in the heart of winter along with his best outriders and attacked Alfred right where it hurt his royal estate at Chippenham, where he was celebrating the Christmas festival. Alfred barely escaped with his life, and was forced to flee into the Somerset levels with just a handful of followers. For the next several months, it was Alfred that was forced to launch piratical raids into his own kingdom, now overrun by Guthrum's warriors. Uber, meanwhile, had spent the winter either in a pirate base off the coast of Wales, or in Ireland. After hearing of Guthrum's success, however, he returned to Wessex, to take part in the carving up of the kingdom, this time with only 23 ships. They made landfall somewhere in northern Devon, near a fortress called Ark Sinuit. It was a location which may have been intended to corner Alfred in a pincer movement after his withdrawal to the wetlands of Somerset. Rather than the easy campaign he had hoped for, however, Uber was met there by the elderman of Somerset, Odda, who had levied his fjordmen to drive out the invaders. It was there, at the Battle of Sinwit in 878, that Uber, the last surviving son of Lodbrok, was struck down in battle. Guthrum was left overextended by the destruction of Uber's forces at Ark Sinwit, and this appears to have allowed Alfred and his eldermen to break up Guthrum's exposed supply lines and his lines of communication. Alfred then gathered as many of the fjordmen of Somerset, Wiltshire and Hampshire as he could, the only counties left to have any sort of semblance of West Saxon government, and he threw his cards on the table for one definitive battle that would decide the fate of Wessex once and for all. A great battle was fought at Eddington in 878, and after Guthrum's crushing defeat, he was forced to accept Alfred's terms for peace. The Viking king was baptised as a Christian, and led the remainder of his forces into East Anglia, where they dispersed and settled. Guthrum kept peace with the West Saxons, and ruled as a Christian king for more than a decade until his death in 890. The possibility remains that at least some of the warriors who had settled in East Anglia had in fact been born in Frisia. <laughs>